He said, be concerned about everything else. With the kingdom of God and with that, he requires of you and he will provide you with all these things. Now let me read another translation that says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be what? Added unto you. This scripture is talking about maintaining a quality spiritual life. Please, there has to be a change in your spiritual life. Because the spiritual begets the physical. If you want your physical life, I want to talk about your physical life, I talk about your health, your finance, to be all right, to be to your expectation. Your spiritual life, there has to be an improvement. That's the first thing. That brings us to the way you pray, the way you live your life generally, the way you attend fellowship. Take God serious. He says, seek your work. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be what? Added unto you. You need to look at around your spiritual life holistically. And my last year that just ended, how far did I go? Before you begin to ask God for this and ask God for that, first and foremost, your spiritual life must be in tandem with God's expectation for you. And that expectation that you shall seek God and this word, seek his love God with all your heart. That is the first thing. Maintain a positive spiritual life. You need to change a lot of things around your life. How do you live your life? Your spirituality is the foundation of your work, of your destiny. You need to change your prayer life. It's not enough to pray the way you're praying now. It's not enough to pray the way you're praying now. You need to change, you need to graduate to 10 minutes prayer time to 20 minutes prayer time. You need to graduate. Because your spirituality determines your future. The second thing you must also be very careful about you need to maintain a quality relationship with people. Acts 14 verse 20 How have you been relating with people? No man is an island. You can't achieve it alone. You need people around you in your workplace, in that place you live. You need people around you to help you to get to that level you want to be. Don't be an island. Don't believe I can do it by my own. I don't need anybody. No, no way. You need people to help you to achieve that result you desire. Acts 14 verse 20 says, But when he, when the believers gathered around, around him, he got up and went back into the town. The next day, he and Barabbas went to what? Went to David. That scripture is talking about Paul. Believers were around about him to support him. You need people, believers to be around you. You need people to help you to get to that next level in life. Maintain a holy relationship with people. Relationship is about give and take. Give and take. Look for people that you know in one way or the other will affect your life positively. Make them your friends, especially believers. They will support you. They will encourage you when you are going down. I've said you need to maintain a quality spiritual life and also maintain a quality relationship with people around you. 
The third thing that is so important is to live a life of purpose. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. This guy lived a life of purpose. Remember what he said. He said, I will not define myself with the king's meat. I will not get myself involved. This guy, this young man was, was living, living a life of purpose. Are you living a life of purpose? When you become purposeful in your life, there are things you don't accept. There are things you accept. You don't accept everything. Beyond this year, don't accept everything. Before you accept anything, you must understand, does it agree with so for you to make this life to be successful, this year to be successful, you must live a life of purpose. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 says, Daniel, Daniel made up his mind not to let himself become ritually unclean by eating the food and drink, drinking the wine of the royal court. So he asked as far as to help him, as far as to help him. You must live a life of purpose. And that means you don't get involved with so many things that will defile you. The Bible says he refused to drink the, from the, the, the table they call from the king's court because he doesn't want to be ritually unclean. When you live a life of purpose, you live a holy life because you have a mission. You don't, you don't make you push some things because it is, it is the current thing happening around. If you want your life to succeed this year, listen to me, you are watching me online, you need to live on purpose, purposeful life. And when you live a purposeful life, you don't get involved in so many things. There are things you must tell yourself the truth. I will not do this, I will not do this, I will not do that. That is going to live if you want to succeed this year. Don't be everybody's friends. Everybody's friends. You want to be everybody, they will like you because you, you do a lot of this with them, so they, they will classify you as someone that understands. This young man in the midst of the of, 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 of where he was in the king's palace, he had the audacity to tell them, I cannot drink the wine that was provided. There are things you must not accept this year. He said, I will not do it. They told one of the leaders in the, in the court, the king's court, to help him to get over. He made up his mind. You don't make up your mind this year. You will finally say to be a successful year. There are issues, there are things, there are hard things you need to make up your mind. There are situations you need to make up your mind. Beloved, you need to make up your mind to stop some things if you want to make an impact this year. Nobody will do it for you. I need to make up my own mind. You need to make up your own mind. You have your own mind, you have your own conscience. I will not come to make up your mind for you. I don't need to try to tell you what you need to do, but you need to make up your mind or he made up his mind. I will not do this. Asking Holy Ghost to help you. Are you willing to make up your mind? We asking God before the end of the last year, you say, God, I want to, I want to move on. I want to get to the next level. Yes, you want to get to the next level. There are principles, there are things you must do. I'm just trying to mention the one your spiritual life must be fine. Secondly, you must maintain a quality relationship with people. Don't be an island. Look out for believers that will assist you, will help you. Thirdly, you must live a life of purpose. Don't live anyhow. You are not called to live anyhow and drink anyhow and eat anyhow. If you live a life of purpose, it will affect your health, it will affect your marriage, it will affect so many things around you, it will affect your job, your, your, your occupation as it were. Live a life of purpose. If you live a life of purpose, you, you, have, you serve God purposefully, intentionally. Serving God is not a pastime like many of us do these days. Because of hardship, because you don't have money, you don't have this, you serve God on, on as a pastor. You know, just when it's convenient for you. What going to make up my mind in that area? The guy made up his mind. I pray for you this morning that you make up your mind to live a life of purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want this, this year to succeed, to be a success, hear me and hear me well. Live a life of intention. When you are praying, when you live a life of purpose, you have time to pray. 
We live a life of purpose as we are now engaged. We are now about to start 21 days fasting and prayer, watching me online. You can join us that by the end of this month, we are starting a long fast for 21 days. You are watching wherever you are watching me from. If you are living a life of purpose, intentionally you join the fast. You want to join. But if you don't live a life of purpose, it does not bother you. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't mind. You wake up in the morning and eat your food and continue your journey. For your life is normal. Nothing is happening. After a pastor can understand. You come to church anytime you want. Do this anytime you want. Don't support those work. Don't support your family even. If you live a life of purpose, you have time for prayers, you have time to sleep, time to fast, time to do things, time to attend fellowship. Time to read your Bible. When you live a life of purpose, you must, you must live, live, read this Bible at least six chapters every day or four chapters in case maybe. You must pick up this Bible, not just on Sunday morning. You pick up the Bible, then you give the dust to your Bible, it's an error. This guy made up his mind. It's about making up your mind. What you want to do this? The first thing you must do, develop your potential. Proverbs 18 verse 6. You must develop your potentials and their potentials you have. Of course, you have them in plenty. You are not ordinary. Say I'm not ordinary. I'm not here. Say I'm not ordinary. Yes, you are not ordinary because you have potential. God has been to you. Do you have them? Yes, they are there lying dormant. You want no one to develop them. You don't want to use them. If you want this year to succeed, you need to look inwardly look into your look at yourself once again and say do i really have potential of course you have potential am i ready to use them yes i'm ready to use them this year the boy said it was at the place of service that god met him and he said Bilonia. He was serving in the church, he was sleeping in the church, in the church uh, um, plant house. Because he, he could not afford money to go for a program or something like choir practice, what he used to do is he goes to sleep in the church by Saturday. So he, he, he didn't have 100 naira there to, to go to the church. So he, he, he will live on Saturday. So he will sleep in the church, he sleep over till Sunday morning. So he, he could save 100 naira. That was how he was operating because he didn't have the luxury of just going up and down from his house to the church on Sunday morning. No, he chose to go there on Saturday, sleep over. Where, where was he sleeping? In the, in the, in the church, um, the rest of engine house. The when we tell you to serve, you look at your trousers, look at your shoes, look at if it's convenient for you first. That is the way we serve God now. You serve God at your own time and at your own. That guy is billionaire now. He said it was at the place of something that God did what? God met him. He got to talk to one of the church elders that was doing something he, he was interested in. And went to the guy, told him that I'm interested in this, you know. He said, okay, you can be coming over. It was at the place of service. Don't take your service to God for granted. The best and opportunity for you to move to the next level is to do what? Is to be at the place of service and the place, place you can always be is to serve God with your potential. I ask you that I know you have one or two things that can help the people of God here and any other place. Develop your potential. Allow your potential to manifest. Give your potential a breathing space to operate. Use all the worries of life and, and cover your potential. All the problems of life, all the issues of life. You don't allow your potential to what? To blossom. You just cover it because you have always, at any point in time, you have a reason to give why you are not operating. 
You have a reason to think why you're not using your potential. If you want this year to be a memorable one, successful one, victorious one, you need to develop your potential. Do you have potentials? Yes, you have. It's an error to come to the church and sit down, fold your hands, doing nothing. You are not sweeping, you are not cleaning, you are not singing, you are not teaching, you are not better doing nothing. Even when you are doing it, you are not doing it selflessly. The guy said he met God at the place of service. Today it has become history. It's a billionaire. How many of us can sleep in the, the engine of the, 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 the church engine house with the oil and those so many things? With the oil. He has to sleep all back. So he starts his journey for the church service on Saturday. He will leave after service because he didn't have the luxury of 100 naira to travel. Today you are content, you don't have money. What do you mean? What do you mean? He didn't have 100 naira. You are not serving Pastor Tony okay, okay? You are watching me online. Any church you, you are attending, you are not serving your pastor. Pastor is doing his own. He said, What kind of presentation of Lord? We fear traveling. You are not serving this man standing. You are not serving that to your pastor, that the local church. Of course, far be from me. So unless you are watching, you are, are watching close for your pastor. Then I will now say, Yes, you are serving the pastor. As long as you don't wash his car, you don't wash his clothes, you don't cook for him, you are not serving. You are serving the Almighty. Behave as if you are serving God, not man. Many of you behave as if you are serving me. The guy was sleeping in the church eating house. That was his testimony. He said, I met God at the place of service. Where was that place? Church. He was trying to encourage the youth. Did he have transport money? 100 A few years ago, maybe six years ago. He leaves school to come to Abuja to wash cars so he could make money. People tell me this, we are suffering. Wow. He will leave school. He will come down to Abuja to wash cars so that he can get small money. He could use to go back to school. Today he's a billionaire. Because he lived a life of purpose. What do you want to be in life? This year, have you have told yourself before we started that this year this is what I want to be in life? And I want I want you to start this year. Take time to talk to yourself before somebody will talk to you. What do you want to achieve this year? What do you want to be? That is living a life of purpose. And you go all the way to achieve it. You pay the price, do the sacrifices. Say after me, Lord, give me the grace to do all the sacrifices I need to succeed. Give me the grace. Pray that prayer. I need that grace because I want to succeed. When you live a life of purpose, you look at you look at what you look at success is as your target. That's your goal. Nothing more, nothing less. You're not here to come and play play around with this world and go and unfulfilled. Go just go finish your race and finish your life. You don't need to show. I've come there to live a life of purpose. Say after me, I've come there to live a life of purpose. From this day. I shall begin to live purposefully. No person blown about by every wind of situation. This is not the wind of doctrine. Blown about by wind of what? Situation. Situation will push you here. You, you lose your steam. You lose your, your strength. Another situation will come. Push you here. Or you go asleep. You resign your faith to what? To just not. You are blown by the wind of what? Wind of situation. It's not just in this time. Many people are there. You are watching me on the your situation now. You are being blown apart by the wind of what? Situation. You allow situation to determine your, 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 your resolve. You know, many of us, if this are working, I think it will be work for me. That is not the way it's supposed to be. Whether things are working in the natural, you shall succeed. Whether they are paying salary, they are not paying, 
Salary should not determine your future, determine your progress in life, but you shall determine your own progress by yourself. Shout hallelujah. Quickly, because your gift determines your lifting. If you neglect your gift, you neglect your lifting. It is your gift that will determine your lifting. If you neglect your gift, you neglect your, 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 your lifting. Don't neglect your gift. You have a gift. Yes, you have a gift. Is there anybody else also have a gift? Let me see your hand. You are watching me online. You know you don't have your, you have a gift. Please, can I just, can you just, can you just signify wherever you are? We can, we can talk about it later. But I know you have, you have gifts. You have gifts. More than, some people are giving nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Nine. Some are prayed at that level. Some have four. Some have three. Is, is it because you are not doing something in the church, you don't have a gift? No, you have gifts, but you refuse to use them. May you begin to use them in the name of Jesus Christ. The fourth thing you need to do is maximize your life opportunities. Live with a sense of urgency. Maximize your life opportunity. Open your eyes. Live with your eyes open. If you see an opportunity, grab it. Let's say, for instance, you've been looking for a place to sell. And it does not become a major issue. It's, 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 it does not come to a point of urgency in your life. I tell you, people can come and present you, give you an opportunity for a shop. You close your mind, you don't ask them. I need it. Amen? Because you, don't live, you need to live with a sense of urgency that I want success, I want it to happen. So that you are already are, you know, you are already alive in the spirit. When somebody, when you see an opportunity, a gleam of light, you see it, you grab it. Before the person begins to tell, okay, I didn't know you are interested. I have a place now. You can be staying there. You know there are people when you don't live with the sense of urgency, when an opportunity comes, you miss it because you are not you are not really sure what you want. If you want to succeed, you need to need, need to know what you want in life. You need to know what what do I really want for this year. Which area of business do, do I want to you know start off with? What do I want? If you don't know what you want, your opportunity comes to miss it. Maybe you are looking for a job, and you are still dangling between getting a job or doing business. And somebody comes around you, or maybe you. you, you you are in a place and you open you got, you, people were just talking and it, it maybe it didn't consign you. Somebody was talking to another person. See, sister, guys, the place they have a job but I employ people. But two of them, you, you don't know two of them from action. And you know you are looking for a job. And you, you don't you want to look for a job. And let's say you are not sure what you want to do. That's why before you go, you need to be sure what you want to do in life, what you want to do with your life. I tell you, if you are not sure what you want to do in life, they will finish that discussion without you benefiting from that discussion. And that discussion was for you. It was for you. So what am I saying? I said, you need to know, understand when an opportunity comes. And I pray for you this morning, I pray for you today that you shall know when an opportunity comes in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you need to maximize your life opportunities. Don't, don't be looking around. Say, the steps of righteous are ordered by the Lord. When God orders your step, He orders your step into a job, into employment, into a business. God does not just order your steps to train you into failure. God orders your steps into an opportunity of opportunities. So you need to be, God will not come down and knock on your head and say, take it, take it, take that job. No, God will not come down to hit you. God will not come down to knock on your head and say, can't you see opportunity? No, if you have to be alive. You have to be, you, have, you, need, you need to understand what you want. So when you see it coming, you know. May you see it coming. Amen. May you see it coming. May you see it coming. Amen. It's important you see it coming. A lot of us do not see it coming at all. We are in a place that talking about something, about supply. And you want to do supply business. They, you know, they don't know you from Adam. 
but they are not talking within themselves and you just want to manage to go order yourself into that environment and you have them discussing and what are you waiting for? After the discussion, you move close to one another and say, sister, I'm interested. How do I apply? Do you know some people will walk away from that environment and never, without knowing that being a believer, you've been praying and fasting, you have said for you have said many prayer points, people have prayed for you, but when an opportunity comes, you miss it. Why? Because you don't understand your purpose. Me, I know when an opportunity comes. And when I see, I don't feel ashamed. When you're for the boss, you are not bold enough, you begin to look at yourself and say, ah, so they, will, they, will, they will feel like I'm not looking for work. I don't have work to do. You see your problem. You are watching me on that's your problem. You begin to feel, uh, so if I tell them they know that, that you are a dress that I don't have a job, look at you. And the Bible says that steps of the righteous shall not order by him. God has just ordered yourself. And I pray for somebody here today that you're watching me online that God shall order yourself into favor, into prosperity, into breakthrough this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. I also call it for myself. God shall order yourself. This is so beautiful. When you understand how God operates, when God orders your step, and you don't begin to laugh. God, is that why you brought me here? God, is that why you brought me here? You never planned to enter that place. Something brought you inside that place. Live under that consciousness that God has. Or is that not right? God said, I will order the steps of right on. If you understand your level is which order, when God orders your step, any place you enter, see it as a place where God will meet you. That's how it works. If you are walking in a place, Understand, and that's why you need to behave well. Open your eyes and your ears, watching for any cross communication, and you don't pick on it. Don't feel ashamed. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this because it is power unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of telling someone that I need a supply business. I'm not ashamed to tell someone that I need job because he said, That is my break. That is the power unto my breakthrough. That is the grace. Yes, People are so ashamed to tell somebody I need a job. You are ashamed, and the opportunity came. And Pastor has prayed. You have sent prayer requests. You have given your life. You have sown seed. And what will happen? What will He do for you again? May you see that opportunity coming. Amen. May you see that opportunity coming. Amen. May God open up your opportunity. May God open your opportunities this year in Jesus' name. May God open your eyes. May you be alive in the spirit when that opportunity will come. May you not be. May you not. May you not be. You know, small man when the day comes. When you are weak, see everywhere you find yourself as an opportunity to change your level. Maybe you went there for one kind job that is not paying. Open your eyes, open your ears, I'm giving you cancer. Open your eyes, open your ears. You may be in that job of 2 naira, 50 naira, 20 naira, 20,000, or 10,000 a month. That's when the job of 100,000 will come. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I saying something to you this morning? Yes, sir. You need to open your eyes. The thought that will help you make a difference in the life of others. Matthew 7 verse 12. Make a difference in the life of others. Impact lives, change people's lives. Wherever you are, make a difference in the life of others. Help people. Assist people. Wherever you are, make an impact. Make it as a point of view to impact lives. Impact lives. That's from your family. Impact the lives of your husband. Impact the lives of your wife. Impact the lives of those that are around you. Impact the impactful in your dealings with others. Be impactful. When somebody gets in contact with you, you will know of a truth that I had contact with this person. Be impactful. In the life of others. Most of the time, Matthew 7 verse 12, weekly. We are still talking about how to succeed this year. Do for others what you want them to do for you. This is the meaning of the law of Moses and of the teachings of the prophets. Please impact on others. Impact life. Change lives. In a little way, in a big way. Try to make people to be happy around you. We don't have all the money in this life, but you are determined, you are more determined to impact upon lives. Beloved, 
as a church, let's make it as let's make it as a point of duty. Have a sense when you go to Monday's ministry room, go to orphanage, give somebody food, give somebody cancer. In Baba, that's why we go, we go go out, we go share the salvation of, of you know, share the gospel of salvation, the good news. In Baba lives. That is how to make this year to succeed. Can you, you have the capacity, yes, you have the capacity to impact life. Don't tell me I don't have money. So I don't have money. Don't share any words of you know, comfort to somebody. He said, no, you may not have money. Money is not everything. If you want to succeed this life, this, this year, in bad lives. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, avoid strife. Avoid strife. Worry. Worry destroys prayers. Avoid quarreling with people. Avoid strife. Whether you place your walk, where you live, avoid strife. Avoid what? Strife. Competitive spirit. Competitive. Quarreling. You don't have time for that. There are good that they engage in strife, they miss because of opportunity for them. Let's say you get angry, you are, you are busy quarreling with the conductor or somebody, you quarrel with somebody, and you get into a place, and, and you came in there out of anger. If anything happens, then you can't benefit. Is it true? Yes, Let's say as you are coming to the church, you quarrel with your husband, quarrel with your wife, or quarrel with the neighbor, and I hear you always say that. That's why I'm going to order you pretend. Avoid strife this year. You want to succeed. You want God to make this year to avoid strife. Please. I will say make every effort to be at peace with all men. It takes an effort to bring peace in the home. It takes an effort to bring peace in any environment you find yourself. It takes a sacrifice. It takes you giving up some things. Giving up your privileges. For, the, for, for peace. If you think peace can just jump up upon you, so with the war, you have to pay, you have to sacrifice some things, your pleasure, your comfort, your rights and privileges for the sake of peace. They will eat with the hunger. That is how peace comes. We saw the thing on Alpha on the internet. A young man here, a young man killed your wife. Because of love of prayer. Love of prayer. Did you see it on the internet? The woman is from Oka. And you get bread at this time you get. Bread, just love of prayer. Let's say that young man is in a place like this. He had a visit like this. Do you think he will run? The swine guy that he will start beating his wife. The wife bought bread for the children. They asked for one, say he didn't have one. The wife bought bread. And he went inside, took the bread, went to the kitchen, whatever. Finished all the bread. The woman said, well, What is happening? Because of that, you know, for it began. They started fighting. I don't know what happened. The lady lost her life. For him, no success. For him, this year and years to come, will you talk about victory or success? If he had avoided strife, avoid strife. Don't lose, have self control over your anger. I'm talking about that later. Self control over your anger. What is bread? I yes, have seven bread now. Why did you go and eat it? If he had refused to eat that bread, I would piss him in that home. He, he was so hungry. Leave the bread for the children. You have to buy the bread. He didn't buy it. He come from your pocket. The woman went and bought for the children, and he went and took the bread because he wanted to eat. He didn't want to. He wanted to. He wanted to prove that he's a man. This year is not a time to prove that you're a woman. A voice cry. You want to succeed this year. In your own place, a voice try. There is no time to begin to quarrel and argue and battle words and begin to say I'm this and there is no time to show I'm this one. 
No time, time, no day. God is really and willing to bless somebody. But in the midst of the strife, God will just come. The angels will come and don't move away. People that are bringing money for you, you are so angry. They are bringing condition for you. You are always angry, you are beating up yourself, you are boiling on matters and the trivial matters. You can imagine bread. The next 10 years, you will be in prison. Add 10 years to his age. Minimum. Because of 800 naira bread. If you want to succeed in life, try as if the Bible says, get angry, but do not do what? Do not see. You can get angry and jump up and hit your head on the roof. No problem. Eh? If you hit it on the roof, sit down on the chair. The Bible says, get angry, yes. You can use your hand, hit the wall. And the wall will break, no problem. It is your mother. You can go to the hospital. But please, after all the pity thing, sit down. I would say, do not see the man sin. You got angry and sin. I said, beating the man. You are lost her life. That's me, I very good. Next 10 years, you will not see, you will not be free. In fact, his journey to Greece is starting that day. For the next 10 years, minimum. After they have settled, they have begged, they will settle for the work they do. Next 15 years, you will, you will move to By the time he comes out, his children must have married. Avoid strife. I know why I mentioned that for somebody. Don't worry. So this year is not for quarrel for me. This year is not for quarrel. I will not quarrel with anybody. I will not quarrel with anybody. Second thing okay, okay, now be committed to kingdom service. Exodus 23, 25. I want us to read that place as I'm about to wrap up. Be committed to kingdom service. Are you committed to kingdom service? How far are you serving in God's house? We need your hand, we need your support. To move God's for forward. We need you to, you know, disciple people. You can read Bible, there are people. Yesterday I went to a, a, some people, I had Bible study with them. And I thought they were so happy. Did I know we can't know I threat? That is all. You know, I was going to want to say, Pastor, which time we come, we come with me. There's something I feel inside me. It was appreciated. Did I go with God? No. Kingdom service is not about comfort. I didn't go with God. I threat, or that is all. We are kind of working. Let's talk. We have to trek this side. It's quite far. Sat down with them. They share the gospel with them. Get back. There are people around you that you need to preach, you need to talk to. Even in the church, you need your hand. Be committed to keep up service in one God to prosper you. There are many ways to serve God. If you don't my microphone, do I can't microphone? There are so many ways to serve God. And I pray. And I look for things to do. And I clean it. And I visitation. And I have my phone call. I didn't see that sister in the church. Get your phone numbers on one on one without pastor knowing. You are assisting the one on one. That is how to serve God. Is that right? Yes, sir. Somebody hear me. Please be committed to God's service. Don't worry. He blesses and come. Let's leave Exodus 3 25. You are going to see. Are they right? Here? But you are going to see something that is very profound, very, very clear that will touch your life today. Don't live your life and don't come to church. Don't, don't wait till the pastor appoints you to a position. No. Look for what to do. What can I do here? What can I be able to do? Where do I serve? Where can I be useful? 23.25 He said, if you worship me, the Lord your God, I will bless you with food and water. Take away all your illnesses. He said, if you worship me, you serve God, when you serve God, you are worshiping God. That's what it means. 
He says, I will, I will, I will bless your work, your food and what I will make the way work all your desire. When he says, I will bless your food and what I miss, literally means he will provide food and water for you. He will open doors for you. He will heal all your sicknesses because you serve him. And we not enjoy, we are enjoying serving God for years now, committedly by his grace. We don't look at anybody. We don't want the members to come with serve God. No way. I don't want for members to come, call all the branches, call all the pastors, let them come so we can join hand in hand. No, no, no. It's a personal race. I don't wait for my wife. I don't wait for my husband. My wife does not wait for me. She does her own. I do my own. If we are we need to be with me, that we need to understand that committedly we need to serve this God for God to bless us. Only way God blesses man is when you serve him. Okay, church is not to make money. You are watching me online. Ministry is not to make money. There is no money in the church as it were. The blessing in serving him, when God will touch someone, someone will help me. There is no money in no matter the, the Abracadabra is doing this church. There is no money in this church. Church is not a place to make money. I don't know your plan, you are watching me, you are a pastor. What happens is that when you serve God, like he says, I'll bless your food and water, then the blessings will be coming. Unfortunately, people think that church is a place to make money. You see all manner of things they do. It is through your service that you receive and bless your life. Yes, yes Christmas is as a hand. I will give you a bag of. I will pass. Okay, 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 yes. You can pray. Not before I pray for you, give me a seed. Unless you are left. If some like God will leave you, okay, you need to say a seed, you know. But not just. It has to be a, a customary thing to do. You know, if I pray and I pray, you send a seed to me. This house of God is not a place of commerce. That was why Jesus entered the temple. What did he do? He said, My house, my my father's house is not, it's, it's not a house of what? It's not a house of my child. He said, Pursuing them away, the people have gone the house of God to the house of my child. They say all of things, they say prayer, they say anointing, they say prophecy. When I prophesy for you, give collect money for me, you are selling prophecy. I you give you money for prophesying. People may not like it. That is the truth. Jesus, that was why he was so angry. Is he still angry today? He's angry at us. Some of these are going on in the church. You know what much that. The truth is, if you serve you committed, you will bless your life. You will bless your life. That's the truth. That's the big truth. Nothing more, nothing less. If you bring out your heart, don't look at anybody. Pick up baby. Pick up some. Don't serve God, you know, you know, with less severe attitude. Anytime you suit your belly. They worship you. Every time you are happy, you come to church. Every time you, they just pay you some money. You got a lot over the weekend, and the Sunday morning you are early here. You are very early here because Allah just came on Saturday. Allah came on, came on Saturday. So therefore, Sunday morning, that Sunday will be a special Sunday. You dress as early as seven thirty. You are here. Begin to look in you. After when we wait the morning to please, then you say, nah, this time is uh, <laughs> I don't get money again. Praise the Lord. Serve God and God will bless you. Nobody will tell you this. Serve God, I don't need to pray for you. Serve God, I don't need to anoint you and say, come and collect all your prosperity. <laughs> listen, listen. I don't need to anoint you. I don't need to give you all your favor. <laughs> They say 20,000. You can't bring your 20,000. If I start up on cutting all your people now, we will be buying. I think I'll start this year. So, so. All your marriage. <laughs> I know how to bless it now. I, I just go inside. I know what to do. I think I'll start selling all your people. See, it's not about buying all your people. Don't stop for God will bless you. I like it. Live in the consciousness of eternity. 
I am the final head. What does it mean? Live in the consciousness of what? Eternity. In fact, this is the opening up of all the things you need to do. Live with heavenly focus. That everything we are doing here is temporary. Nobody knows what will happen in this minute. Me that is standing here talking. I don't know what will happen in this minute. Amen? Live in the consciousness of what? And live in the consciousness that there is a place we are going. It helps you not to argue for some things and quarrel. And you know, when you live under that consciousness, that we live under that consciousness. You don't need to quarrel. And because the heaven is in focus, heaven at last. You don't hold tight. You don't hold tight from, from beliefs and some things. You hold on tight, even when it's, it's against, when it's not working. You still hold on tight because you want to prove it. But no, when you live in, 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 you know, in, in, with eternity in focus, there are things you don't hold on, you don't hold on to. You, can, you are open to advice. You are open to correction. Because everything will end here. You are living with heaven in focus. May you live with heaven in focus in the name of Jesus Christ. May you that not everything will not end here. There is a place you and I are going. It will end there. And that place is better than this place. This was said in my father's house. My father's house, there are all many mansions. I know you do not know, but I will tell you. That is heaven. It's a better place than this place. May God bless you, my in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you begin to pray? Let's just start begin to pray. I say, Lord, we have mentioned up to seven or nine points. Number one, we said, Live in spirituality, live, in, live with spirituality, live, have a holy relationship with people, live a life of purpose, live with heaven in focus. Discover your potential, use your potential, serve God, serve God. Commit your life to service to God and so on. There are so many things we have shared together today. Great. I said, Lord, help me. I decided to make it this year. I decided to make it this year. Begin to pray for yourself. Make up your mind. Daniel, live the life of hopeless. Make up your mind. It's all about making up your mind. You want to succeed this year. You need to succeed. Let no money deceive you. Secret to success does not lie with anybody. He lies with God's word. He lies with obeying instructions. He does not lie with anybody. There is nobody that has secret to success. It's open for everybody to know. It's open. It's open. If you can lay all hands on all this and do them, as you have mentioned, then you shall begin to express joy and peace and deliverance throughout your life. Begin to pray. Say, Lord, give me the grace. To live spiritually this year. Give me the grace to know when opportunities come for me. Give me the grace to maintain good relationship with people. Give me the grace to maximize my life potential. Give me the grace to live on purpose. Give me the grace to develop my potentials and use them. Because my gift determines my lifting. To neglect my lifting is to neglect my what? My lifting. To neglect my, 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 my potential is to neglect, to neglect my gift is to neglect my lifting. Begin to pray. Ask God to help you to avoid strife this year. You are not for trouble this year. May God give you the grace and remove everything that will make you to quarrel this year. Begin to pray. Lord, help me to avoid strife. In my home, in my workplace, wherever I find myself, Deliver me in the church. Help me to avoid strife. Help me to avoid trouble. Help me to avoid quarrel in any way. Thank you, Father. Receive all glory and honor this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, I'm my, my father, my father. Say, Lord, I'm going to say, my father, my father. Every power that will stop me from achieving this. By achieving all this, let that power catch fire. Begin to pray, begin to pray. You may have made up your mind that you want to do all this, but when you step out from here, begin to see yourself 
differently. Begin to pray. Any part that will stop you this year, let it catch fire. Let somebody pray. Let those somebody pray. The good pass from the waters, pass from your foundation. Anything that will stop you, you are really made up your mind. Begin to pray. Let it catch fire. Thank you, Father. Receive all glory and God. In Jesus, precious name we are praying. Father, we thank you. Bless your name, God. Thank you for your word has come expressly. Thank you for that success you are going to you have blessed us with. Thank you because you are going to walk into those that success in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because we are praying from heaven. We don't pray from the earth. We are praying from heaven to the earth. Because we live with you in heavenly places. That is where we are. Our blessing is not from earth to heaven, from heaven to earth. But we ask that they manifest in our life this year. Those that are not here in the church are yet to come back. They are watching us online. All our branches, I pray that this year, that this church shall record tremendous success. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Receive all glory and honor this hour. Show us mercy. Have mercy upon us this year. Because it's our year of mercy. So shall it be. Show mercy to that family. Show